I see you Another one of you mercs looking for McQueen? He's in the back room. God, I love this song. Ooh, a vault suit, huh? Can't say I'm surprised to find you in a dump like this, McCready. I was wondering how long it would take your bloodhounds to track me down, Winlock. It's been almost three months. Don't tell me you're getting rusty. Should we take this outside? It ain't like that. I'm just here to deliver a message. In case you forgot, I left the gunners for good. Yeah, I heard. But you're still taking jobs in the Commonwealth. That isn't going to work for us. I don't take orders from you. Not anymore. So why don't you take your girlfriend and walk out of here while you still can? What? Winlock, tell me we don't have to listen to this shit. Listen up, McCready. The only reason we haven't filled your body full of bullets is that we don't want a war with Good Neighbor. See, we respect other people's boundaries. We know how to play the game. It's something you never learned. Glad to have disappointed you. <laughs> you can play the tough guy all you want. But if we hear you're still operating inside gunner territory, all bets are off. You got that? You finished? Yeah. We're finished. Come on, Bards. Look, lady. If you're preaching about the Atom or looking for a friend, you've got the wrong guy. If you need a hired gun, then maybe we can talk. From what I just heard, sounds like you're out of business. Are you kidding me? I'm not about to let a couple of gunner rejects stand between me and a solid payday. Extra baggage like that can get you killed. Look, I need the money, and I'm not about to let Winlock and Barnes scare a client away. You have nothing to worry about. Those two are weaker than a housefly. They're about half as smart. And what about you? How do I know I won't end up with a bullet in my back? You don't. That's part of the risk, right? Can't argue with that. I'll tell you what. The price is 250 caps. Up front. There's no room for bargaining. What do you say? Everything's negotiable. Would you take 200? You drive a hard bargain. You just bought yourself an extra gun. All right, boss. Let's get out of here. Nice to be on the open road. Good neighbor was starting to wear out at welcome. Sounds like you had a rough time of it back there. Rough? That's putting it mildly. Let's put it this way. Can't get much rest when you're sleeping with one eye open. Still, it was the best place for me to set up shop. Diamond City's goons would have run me out of town, and wandering the Commonwealth alone isn't the brightest plan when you're hard up for caps. Caps are pretty important. You're goddamn right they are. Right now, I need every cap I can get. I hope you aren't in trouble. No, not really, but... Uh, I don't usually go around sharing stuff like this, but you've been pretty straight with me, so I'm gonna be straight with you. It's those two asshole, <clears throat> Those two idiots you saw me talking to at the third rail. Winlock and Barnes. And they've been hounding me for months, and it's been driving off clients. No one wants to touch me once they learn I used to run with the gunners. And I figured if I could get enough caps together, maybe I could buy them out. I wouldn't trust those guys, even if you paid them off. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Winlock and Barnes have a small army of gunners with them at all times. They might decide to just keep the caps and put a bullet in my head for good measure. If I set up a place to meet them, I'm sure they'd roll in with everyone they've got. Unless, maybe you and I could pay them a little visit and put an end to them before they realize what's going on. Before you get that look on your face, let me just say that I wouldn't even be asking if I didn't trust you. If you need my help, I'm there. Wow. I don't know what to say. Truth is... I haven't been able to rely on anyone since I was a kid. Everyone I've met has either tried to rip me off or plant a knife in my back. But you, you're different. We see eye to eye on almost everything. And I have a funny feeling you actually care about what happens to me. That's why I asked for your help. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make this easy on you. If you feel like helping me with this, head over to the Mass Pike Interchange and we'll take them down. If you don't, I'm not going to hold it against you. Either way, thanks for hearing me out. It's nice to know that you care. Hawthorne. Hey, what's your story? Mercenary, caravan guard. Blood, bullets, and money, all the way. Right, 
Well, maybe not so much the blood part if you can help it, but I hear you. Anyway, I'm just kicking back and sharing stories while I'm between things. I've been all over, seen vaults, pre-war ruins, and plenty of monsters. See you around, Hawthorne. Yeah, take it easy. So, you impressed yet? I told you I was a damn good shot. Actually, I'm quite impressed. Yeah, I thought you might be. I'm completely self-taught, you know. Picked up a sniper rifle when I was 10 and never looked back. I always thought it was smarter to hit my targets at long range. I mean, why take chances, right? Besides, I had to come up with every trick in the book to survive the Capital Wasteland. I can't imagine how difficult it must have been out there. Oh, at least I wasn't alone. Lived underground in a place called Little Lamplight with a bunch of other kids. Left there when I was around 16. We kind of had a policy there. No adults. When you were 16, you packed up and left. I know, it sounds crazy, but having adults around was something we couldn't trust. How could a bunch of kids survive without help? Everyone pulled their own weight. Just like a colony you'd find anywhere. We all had our designated jobs and we washed each other's backs. Can you believe I was actually the mayor for a while? Me. Crazy, I know. Pretty brave. Bunch of kids living alone like that? I don't know. Looking back on the whole thing, I think we were just lucky. Anyway, when I hit 16, I ended up wandering the Capital Wasteland for a while. I took the odd job here and there, but things were pretty hot with the Brotherhood of Steel running the show. So I hitched a ride with a caravan and made my way north until I ended up here. Made a pretty decent name for myself before I heard that the gunners needed some sharpshooters. Biggest mistake of my life. They were animals. Killed anything that moved if it got in their way. I went with it for a while because the caps were good, but... I don't know. I guess it started to catch up with me. So I quit. Which pretty much brings us to now. So there you have it. My whole life in a nutshell. Sounds like the road can be a lonely place. Until you meet someone to share it with. I... well, I... I never thought of it that way. Maybe that's why I feel so comfortable telling you all this. Look, I know I tend to be a pain in the ass... I mean, I know I tend to be arrogant and I come off like I want to be alone. Nothing could be further from the truth. Being alone scares the heck out of me. And now that we've been traveling together for a while, I'm beginning to realize how much I missed having someone I could depend on. I just wanted you to know that I'm going to do everything I can to see that it stays this way. Well, that's all I had to say. Hope you got something out of all that. I know I did. That's for both of us, right? Hey, I never got a chance to properly thank you for helping me take out Winlock and Barnes. We're friends. No thanks necessary. Well, I wanted to say it anyway. You stuck your neck out for me. And I don't forget sh I mean, things like that. You ought to try cursing once in a while. It's good for the soul. Oh, believe me. I know. It's not about you. It's about a promise I made. When I left the Capital Wasteland, I didn't just leave Little Lamplight behind. I left my family behind. I had a beautiful wife named Lucy. And a son we named Duncan. He's the one I made my promise to. The promise to clean up my act and to be a better person. I guess that sounds pretty stupid coming from a guy who shoots people for a living. I don't know what to say. Sure you do. You want to tell me how cruel it was to leave them behind. My son, he's sick. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with him. One day he's playing out in the fields behind our farm. The next he took a fever and these blue boils popped up all over his body. Last I saw he was almost too weak to walk. I didn't dare ask him to come with me. Honestly, I don't know how much longer he's going to last. There must be something we can do. I was hoping you'd say that. A few months before we met, I bumped into a guy named Sinclair who claimed his buddy caught some kind of disease. I thought he was wasting my time until he said his partner broke out in blue boils. They dug up information about a cure at a place called MedTech Research. They even managed to grab the building's lockdown security codes. Unfortunately, Sinclair's buddy died before they were able to break into the facility. I mean, there's no way that's a coincidence, right? MedTech has to be the place. 
Don't give up hope. If there's a cure, we'll find it. Thanks, partner. I'll put medtech research on your map. When you're ready, just take us out there. I have all the codes we need to get through their security. What you're doing... No one's ever cared that much about me before. Even if it takes me the rest of my life. I'll repay this debt to you. I swear it. Heads up. Yeah, what is it? There has to be something worth a few caps in here. What's here you go, on? McCready. We did it. Holy crap, we actually did it! We just gave Duncan a fighting chance to live. I don't know how I'll ever be able to pay you back for this. I owe you big time. I don't know, you're already running quite a tad. <laughs> I know I am. I've always been better at taking than giving. Maybe one day I'll learn to get my priorities straight. Anyway, the last step ahead of us is getting the cure to Daisy and Good Neighbor. With her caravan contacts, she's the only one I trust to get this to Duncan on time. This is the last favor I'm going to ask. I promise. Let's go. Hey, Daisy. McGrady. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> you haven't been avoiding me, have you? No. How could I stay away from someone as cute as you, Daisy? Uh, you're a lousy liar. But I'll just play smooth and pretend I don't know that. So, what do you need? I got it, Daisy. I found the cure to Duncan's disease. Oh my god. That's wonderful news. How'd you do it? Last time you tried, the pharaohs almost chewed you to bits. I didn't do it alone. My friend here got me through medtech. Now, all I need to do is get the cure into Duncan's hands. Can you help me? Of course, McCready. You saved my behind more than once. It's the least I can do. It's okay. You can trust me. I swear I'll get the cure to Duncan. I don't have a problem with that. Then it's settled. I'll get the sample on the first caravan leaving the Commonwealth. The driver owes me a few favors. And he's reliable. It will arrive at your homestead in no time, McCready. Thanks. You're a doll. Hey, do me a favor. Take care of McCready for me. He's one of the good ones. Hey. What do you want? <clears throat> you, uh, you ready to talk now? I promise it won't take long. I hope nothing's wrong. Wrong? No. Not at all. I've been waiting for the right moment to talk to you and... I suppose this is as good a time as any. After helping me get Duncan's cure from MedTech, I figured I owe you something. And I always pay my debts. Here, I wanted you to have this. I know a carved toy soldier is a strange reward for risking your life, but this one's special. It means a lot to me. Thank you. You're welcome. My wife Lucy gave this to me right after we met. I, uh... I told her I was a soldier, and she made it for me. Never could bring myself to tell her the truth. That I was just a hired killer. And the soldier story was the best thing I could come up with. I didn't want to lose her because of what I was. So you ever find out the truth? No. It doesn't really matter anymore. She died a few years back. We made the mistake of holding up in a metro station one night. We didn't know that the place was infested with ferals. They were on her before I could even fire a shot her apart right in front of me. There was nothing I could do. I took everything I had to escape with Duncan in my arms. Maybe it would have been better if we died there with her. You may have lost your wife, but you saved your son. That counts for something. Maybe. I don't know anymore. Damn, I miss Lucy. No matter how bad things got, she was always there with a shoulder to lean on. It gave me... Well, it, it gave me the courage I needed to press ahead. To never give up. When she died, I thought that feeling was gone forever. Then I met you. You have the world's problems in your back, and here you are helping me with mine. Lending me your shoulder like Lucy did. I just want you to know how much your friendship means to me. I was hoping what we have together could be more than friendship. I... I, I don't know. I mean, I, I never thought of us that way. What about your husband? I know he's gone, but... 
You still love him, don't you? That's the past. You are all that matters to me now. I... I don't know what to say. I know I was taking a chance dumping all my feelings on the table. But now that I know how you really feel about me, it was definitely worth the risk. For once in my life, everything's going right. And I have you to thank for it. I don't think anyone in the world could ask for a greater gift than that. Thank you. Wake up, sleepyhead. Hey. What's up? Hey. If you want to talk, I'm here for you. Your thoughts? Walk a hundred miles if I knew there was a pile of caps waiting for me at the end. How do you think things are between us? With you at my side, I feel like I can take on the world. There's no bond stronger than that. What are your thoughts on our relationship? Having you this close to me has made me happier than I've ever been before. How do you feel about our relationship? The day you told me that you loved me was the greatest day of my life. Your thoughts? Don't get too far ahead of me. I like being close. That's all for now. Sure. <laughs>